What's going on guys? Today we had a driver come in and the fan clutch was bad on his Kenworth T660 with a pack car engine. We're gonna show you guys how to fix it. So man in the country that I know. No money in what he used to grow. No, he don't care what people think. When a farmer turns into a Mississippi. what's going on guys today we had a driver come in here and the truck was getting above temperature and he was main complaint he didn't care about the truck running hot he just was mad because the air conditioner was blowing cold so anyway we got to diagnosing some issues and we found that the fan clutch is bad of course obviously this is the new one this is the old one and old Bill has done ripped this bitch apart and he's gonna show you what the guts of it looks like and what it's about and what failed on it. All right, used to, you could get a rebuild kit for them. I was told when I called about this uh, earlier today, they said you can't get the rebuild kits for them anymore, but it'd come with all kind of goodies. Uh, used to, you could pull these six screws out, pull these plates off, replace this which this is nothing more than the clutch part of it it's just like brake lining Let's see if i can show the wire on that thing you can see where it's been eat up from use not to mention the bearing in this hub itself was uh it did have some slack in it more than what you're supposed to have like i said we've already disassembled this thing so we could show you guys what it looks like on the inside You get the spring. I mean, it's pretty simple. And used to, you could replace this whole valve. That'd come with the rebuild kit and everything. Sealed bearing. You can see the bearings down in there. <clears throat> so, used to on the trucks, when the fan clutch went out, the old fan clutches, the fan would run all the time and the air would kick in and disengage it. Well, on the new ones, they're not as smart anymore to do them that way. So when your fan clutch goes out, your damn fan don't work. So you're stuck. But that's what it looks like on the inside. And you can't get the rebuild kits for them. So you just kind of screw and go spend a whole lot of money. But anyway, we're gonna show you guys, we're gonna go over the truck now and show you the guys what we had to do to get the this old one off. And then we'll let you watch us put the new one on. Let's go take a look. Okay, we're on the driver's side of the truck. Of course, that's the radiator. Bill's gonna show you what I had to jerk off this bad boy to get it to it. All right, I wanted to make it easy on myself, so I pulled the air to air pipes off, put a rag over the over the intake, put a rag over the turbo on that side, pulled the radiator support rods off so I could push the radiator forward. This one does not have any hood supports connected to the radiator, so you don't have to worry about your hood hitting the floor and your radiator holding over with it. Even though you still got the bolts on the bottom, I know the radiator will pull over. But we've got this one where we can move it by hand. Fan shroud is pulled up. Uh, I've got the brackets down here for the fan shroud. Uh, this is the top one. The bottom one is underneath the truck. Pulled it off. Pulled the shroud back so I can get to all the fan bolts and get the fan pulled out and get the hub off. Mm -hmm. One thing you need to make sure is when you remove the the uh, old fan hub, the old fan clutch, you take this little plastic gear off. This is the old one. Toss it. The new one is already on the truck. I've I've already put it in place, and it there's only one way that it'll go. All right, we're gonna show you guys how to stick this son of a gun back in here. All right, guys, I'm on the passenger side now, and Bill's on the driver's side. As you can see, I'm getting ready to put her back in. It's a 5 6 tenths. That's what it takes to fit those. So you guys will know if you ever have to take one of these off a of pack car. It is not a Torx. These Allen sockets are a lifesaver. Don't try to stick an Allen wrench in there and try to turn them. You'll, you're wasting your time. So it is not a Torx, guys. I know you're probably gonna 
be expecting it to be a torch, but it is not. It's a 5 16 Allen. All right. Like I said, where that little plastic gear is in there, it'll only go on there one way. Well, actually, it'll go two ways. She's up flush. I'm sticking my finger in the hole to try to line up my bolt holes. They're pretty close. Then I'll take a screw and, or take one of the bolts, stick it in there and get one of them started and start my way around. You seen one bolt go in a hole, you've seen them all go in a hole, so. We're not gonna bore you guys and make this a super long video with all the bolts getting put in. So you get the picture and you work your way around, get all your bolts put back in and we'll show you the next step. All right, he's got them all in there finger tight and he's putting his rechicata on there. Tighten them all down. Like I say, I won't bore you guys with that, but I just wanna show you he got them all started by hand tight first and then putting the ratchet on it. All right, guys, he's got them all finger tight and then put the ratchet on there and got it tight as he can. And of course it starts turning from the belt. So he's gonna talk to you about what you gotta do here. What I've done, and I'm not gonna go through all of them with you guys, but <clears throat> what I've done is I've taken the old nuts and put on the, on the studs to keep from messing the studs up. Uh, what I usually do is I'll take this pry bar or take a pry bar and hold against the nut and then tighten the bolts down to get my final torque. That way you don't booger up the threads as you're uh, tightening them down. There you go. That's how you do that. All right, we got the fan wiggle back in place. There's six bolts. It actually holds the fan onto the fan clutch. Each one of them gets a flat washer a lock washer and a nut. So he's gonna run them all up hand tight and we're gonna get them tightened down and we'll show you what the next thing is. All right guys, he got the uh, fan shroud back on here, putting the top bracket on. Hang on a minute, Bill. Bill was having an issue. He said his damn holes done gone. Something done happened. You can see where the bracket goes right there. And uh, when you turn this thing, yeah, the whole floor go. So we got her lined up. It's kind of like Johnny Cash's Cadillac he built, you know, when he went to put in the transmission, all the holes are gone. So we're back on track. So we're getting the top bracket put back on. Of course, this will have to be attached back here. This line will go back in that top clip there and get them bolts tight. Put her nuts back on here. And then we'll be ready to put the bottom one on and then get her piping back hooked up. So I'll show y'all what that was. All right, looking at this thing from the bottom side, on the bottom side of the shroud, you've got uh, a brace that bolts up here. And then there's a bolt on that side. Working on putting these uh, last two bolts in and getting it secured down here before we tighten everything down. Always make sure you start all your bolts first before you tighten the first one down. Otherwise, you're gonna have a, a time getting all your bolts started. The top mount that we had troubles with the holes running away from us a while ago. So. Got these two bolts on, as you can see, that's the two Bill showed you a while ago that was underneath right there. So we get this button back up here and we can get her popping back on. We'll show you what that's all about. All right, that's gonna be the last two bolts. Um, as you can see right there and the one he's working on. I don't have the whole fan shroud back up. All the brackets will be tight. We'll be ready to put radiator supports back on it. So we'll show you what all that's about. All right, that's gonna be the top radiator hose here. It's got a U-bolt that goes through it. We'll pull the radiator forward to, or backwards and get the nuts on there. 
And that's one less of the puzzle piece done. I want to show you guys something real quick before we stick this piping on here. Y'all see what that is right there? All right. Y'all notice this one ain't hooked up. This one here is one we haven't used. Y'all see what brand this is? Let me get it turned right way. Mm-hmm. Been around here for a little while. You see it's all beat up, marred up, chewed up. Now look at the difference in that. You see how that snap on one way? Bill's gonna show you why we having to use old ugly. That late. That's why we're using Old Ugly. For about $130, I can get that fixed. Or you can go buy one of them. There. Brand new for about $130. Yep. All right, back to business. Just want to show y'all a cool little something, something there. Y'all check that right there out. All right, some people are jerk on these pipes and do whatever to get these hoses off. I usually take it loose at both ends so that way you can pull up on it. If there is a gasket, you need to make sure you didn't ring your gasket taking it off. The one on the underside has an orange gasket on it. It's still in pretty good shape. Make sure you don't lose your gasket if there's a gasket on there. Cover that up with a rag to keep any garbage, trash for getting in there, dirt divers from going in there and building a nest, whatever. Of course, if we didn't have this video camera rolling, that thing would just fail right in there, you know. Always seems when you trying to record it, it don't ever want to work right. You can see we got all the radiator supports back on, so that job is done. Like always, guys, if you like the videos, hit that thumbs up button and subscribe down here below. You guys have a great week. We'll catch you next time.